Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday. It is the Earthmaster out here about 12.26 p.m. That's California time, July 12th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a little 1.0 earthquake across Southern California. We'll go ahead and check in down here real quick since this has been our uh, little hot spot of earthquake activity out here in the last couple days. There's two earthquakes, one north here of the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, also one down here. A couple down here across the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Uh, let's see if we got any larger movement overnight. Uh, looks like we had a 3.5 earthquake up here about 1 o'clock this morning on the... Let's see where that's at, close to the creeping section. Actually, I believe, yeah, that's right along the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Pretty active area. Uh, that 2.6 from yesterday into Utah, but uh, still seeing some earthquake activity down here across Southern California today. I'm watching this little swarm here into the Brawley Seismic Zone. I uh, got a number of earthquakes out there uh, this morning. A bunch after midnight, it looks like. Quite a few ones stirring up out here. Um, see what else we have here. In the, I want to see what the total tally is real quick. So we're up to uh, just about 100 earthquakes here. The majority of these from this morning and yesterday. I got a, a pretty decent swarm. And uh, as I mentioned last night, got to watch this pretty closely here. The largest earthquake was a 4.3 yesterday. Uh, looks like, yeah, 3.4 yesterday morning and 3.1. And the swarm continues today down here across the Salton Sea. San Andreas Fault here, fairly well locked and loaded. Just waiting, you know, waiting to see what happens here with the uh, plate boundary. Eventually, that's going to have to give... Uh, the rest of the area, um, I'm really not seeing any swarming up north here like we had um, yesterday or so within this area. I had a decent amount of earthquake activity here. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> I was looking for my phone there. I heard it go off, uh, including a three-pointer there yesterday. So today, um, most of the earthquake activity from... Oh, actually, there's one after midnight, little small one up there, but still just... It remains active out there across Southern California right now. Just be on guard. Uh, one earthquake there along the creeping section still. This one, park field segment, pretty quiet right now. The Bay Area, uh, looks like we got uh, one earthquake there after midnight, little 2.1. That is just off of the Calaveras Fault. Uh, further up into Northern California here, a number of earthquakes, including another 2.3. Just shy here of the triple point boundary. Nothing uh, big happening out here for now, but uh, again, be on guard. A little earthquake up there at uh, Three Sisters. A 1.4 earthquake. Uh, looks like it's north here of the South Sister. A little interesting earthquake there, 2.6 miles deep across that uh, volcano area. We still have a, a decent swarm up there around Mount Rainier. Got uh, a number of earthquakes up here, probably approaching, um, it looks like we're approaching 500 earthquakes, at least the ones that they're counting out here. There's quite a bit that has been unaccounted or, or not documented, you know, as far as determining the exact uh, magnitude and whatnot, but uh, that's a lot of earthquake activity. Let me tell you, almost 500 earthquakes. Um, looking at the seismograph station here and there's a number that they're reporting almost 500 earthquakes there from the PNSN network uh, with regards to that earthquake swarm across Mount Rainier. Uh, the seismograph stations out there today a uh, little bit less active. There's still a number of earthquakes there listed on the map. I have no clue where my phone is. But I do hear it going off somewhere. And that's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> All right. Yeah, number of earthquakes out there still. Um, some interference, it looks like, on these readings here. But, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, looks like the swarm is going away, or at least dying down for now. Uh, quick glance at the uh, GPS stations here. I forgot that one's offline. Got this one here. Um, shows, uh, well, pretty much what we've seen here in, in the last several years. No major uptick here, uh, just kind of a seasonal pattern of up and down GPS displacement there across the volcano that, that could have some something to do with the snow melt and whatnot and the ground, ground absorption. 
of that snow melt, but uh, no rise there at the volcano. Swarm dying down. We'll continue to watch that, though, see how things uh, play out. Uh, aside from that, uh, look at the inner portion of the country here. Yellowstone, uh, a couple earthquakes there yesterday down south there into Wyoming. Um, let's see here. Check out the Yellowstone overview. Really not seeing anything major going on. There's a couple of those earthquakes there around Moose Creek, Idaho, and Pitchstone Plateau. But uh, aside from that, things look pretty quiet there across Yellowstone. Texas oil fields, even down south of Austin, they're getting hit uh, with some earthquake activity. Uh, New Madrid seismic zone, one earthquake from, from yesterday. Uh, a little bit of movement over here across the Blue Ridge Mountains area, the Great Smoky Mountains region, with uh, a couple earthquakes this morning in the two range. A uh, quick glance here over at Japan. Got a number of earthquakes there, mainly from yesterday. I uh, do want to double check the Japan Meteorological Agency and see what we have here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a little spotty it looks like. A couple twos here this morning. Looks like maybe one or two earthquakes per hour. A uh, pretty big jump from last night to about 3 o'clock in the morning where there was no earthquake activity. So uh, this is dying down for now, but there's still earthquake activity. Uh, periodically happening here across the south just off the Nankai trough here to the south around this earthquake that we seen yesterday uh, not a whole lot of movement there today uh, even up north along the curl cam check uh, some older quake activity one it looks like one new one right in the middle point there across the cent center portion of the curl cam check uh, main areas today looks to be uh, well working our way down south here across New Zealand pretty active there this uh, earthquake getting uh, well it's really close to the Alpine fault there number of uh, threes and fours across that area it's been quite active out there across New Zealand here recently and that's got uh, it's got a little bit of potential there for some big earthquake activity uh, pretty deep movement up north along the Tonga Trench and our quiet zone looks to be around the uh, Fiji area up to Papua New Guinea on that plate boundary. Typical movement there in the crunch zone. Not a whole lot happening here across the rest of the globe. Pretty quiet aside from some twos there across the Mediterranean. Some older quake activity in the Atlantic from yesterday. Um, so just kind of a minor to moderate day so far of earthquake activity. Uh, Hawaii's out there kind of stirring up a little earthquake activity. See what we got going on here. Some ones and twos from yet, well, Looks like a lot of those this morning here. Interesting, some shallow quake activity out here. Uh, let's go take a look here at the Kilauea Volcano page. And see what's going on here. See if we got any change. Of course, we just got through with a, an eruption here a couple days ago. That's the that's the eruption. This is the inflation chart up there at the Kilauea summit. Uh, when an eruption happens, obviously that's depleting magma from below. That's why we get that def deflation reading on the map. Now we're starting to go back up. I don't see anything of any change, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Remember, one of the vents there is blocked up at the summit area. I did not um, participate in this last eruption, so that could have uh, in effect here on future eruptions, whether we're going to see just that one vent uh, remain active or we could, you know, see that even potentially um, create a blockage there. And then uh, we'd be talking about different migrational patterns there for the magma because it's got to find a way to the surface there somewhere. Uh, but for now, we'll continue to watch that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, like I said, a little, little bit of uptick here down across New Zealand. Definitely watch that. Uh, let's go check out space weather activity real quick. See if we got anything cooking out here on the sun. A number of sea flares, even some M flare activity it looks like overnight. Uh, that is coming off of uh, a couple different sunspots here. Let's go ahead and check these out. Oh, that one looks like it's offline. Uh, here's the most recent image, I believe, here from, yep, 712. 
So we have uh, this obviously decent sized sunspot here that uh, been throwing off some sea and inflare activity. Also another region back over here. I know it's starting to separate a little bit here, but we're also getting a couple independent cores joining in and that may become a complex sunspot. It's already thrown off some sea flare activity. This one as well. There's a number of them here that's just kind of uh, been growing over the last couple days. So we do have an elevated flare threat right now. Uh, let's see what we got. 50% chance here for an M flare. X flare around 5% chance. And as you can see, we're starting to get back into the active uh, phase there in terms of solar flares. Uh, nothing major coming up as far as the auroras go. In fact, uh, yeah, it looks like maybe on the July 13th UTC time, 4 to 5 KP index, uh, due to some high speed solar wind stream from that little thin area out here, which is now facing away from Earth. Uh, this main chunk is pointing down to the south of the Earth Sun plane, so that's really not going to affect us all that much there for uh, the auroras. Um, yeah, Beta Gamma Delta is 4136 up there, so that's one of the more complex sunspots. All right, far as any close approach asteroids go, let's see if we got anything out here today that's been added that we should be aware of. And right now, I really don't see anything out there. There's a couple big ones out there. Some newly discovered big ones as well. This one's fairly new. That's new. Uh, all these are millions of miles away, though. So we are safe and sound for now. A look at the current day one outlook for severe weather. Slight, a little thin, slight risk category up here. Looks like across portions of Ohio. And southward, 2% chance for some tornado activity up in the um, uh, Michigan area. Uh, main threat appears to be some wind. That's about it. A little bit of hail, maybe, but uh, a little bit of wind out there. Let's see what else we got. Seismograph stations out there, calm, very calm. Don't see anything uh, on any of these right now. So we'll watch today, see how it plays out. We're always under movement out here. And Southern California has just been uh, been seeing quite a bit of uptick here recently. A little bit quieter today, but doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Just be prepared. We will catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening, folks, for the Saturday night update. Enjoy your uh, weekend. <clears throat> it's supposed to be 107 here uh, where I live outside of Chico in northern california so it's not uh not going to be very pleasant outside have a good one stay safe everyone